Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back for a stock pick of the day video here. It is July 8th, uh, back from 4th of July weekend. Hopefully everyone had a safe and happy 4th of July weekend. We are going to cover one out of the consumer discretionary sector that has been getting a lot of attention lately. Uh, just seems to continue to drop. We are going to take a look at Nike. Now, if you would do me a favor to help out the channel, hit that thumbs up button down below. Make sure you are subscribed. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Make sure the notification bell is rung down below. Click that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. And drop a comment down below. Again, I know this one, Nike, is maybe a bit controversial, as well as a lot of YouTubers out there have been covering it because, again, it has been dropping over the last uh, several weeks, if not several months, and it continues to do so down again today. So I thought we'd take a look at it finally. Uh, and again, thank you to everyone who has taken the time to hit that thumbs up button. The subscribers out there really appreciate you all. We are almost to a thousand subscribers. So help me get there. Make sure you're subscribed, hit that notification bell and drop a comment. Doing all that really does help a small YouTube channel like mine grow. It helps to get these videos out. It helps to spread the message. Dividend growth investing is what we focus here on this channel. And in my opinion, it is the best way to eventually reach financial freedom. Now we're going to jump over to the vested interest stock screener. This is how I set up the video. So we're going to run through this screener at the end. We will look and see if it meets five of eight. Now, just because it meets five of eight does not mean I am investing in the company. It means that it makes it onto my watch list. And then I do more of a deep dive into the financials. There are thousands of stocks out there in the stock market. This is just a way for an initial screening of those stocks to see if I'm interested in doing more of a deep dive into the company. It's also how I look at companies in my portfolio and do a back check to see if they are still meeting some of the criteria that I've set up. And if they do not, then maybe it's time to do more of a deep dive into those as well. Look at their financials, make sure they're still meeting the criteria that I have. And when I look at their financials, I'm looking at their balance sheet, their income statement. I'm looking at stuff like debt to equity ratios. Assets over liabilities? Is their revenue growing over time? Are their margins expanding or contracting? Are they paying down debt? Uh, there's several other items in there. I like to look at their price to book, their peg ratios, several other uh, things in their income and balance sheet that I'm looking at. Uh, debt being a big one as well. Uh, make sure they're paying down their debt, not taking on additional debt, buying back shares instead of diluting you as a shareholder. Lots of good information in balance sheet and equity balance sheets and income statements. So you should be looking at those as well. And then I'll do a discounted cash flow analysis to see the range I'm willing to pay for the stock. So again, just because it meets five of eight or if it's a bank, six of nine, I throw in price to book does not mean I am investing. Now let's jump back over to Nike. You can check them out at their homepage, www.nike.com. That's www.nike.com. That is their homepage where I pull this information from. And unless you have lived under a rock, uh, for the last 20, 30 years, you are well aware of who Nike is. Nike Inc. is a team comprised of Nike, right? That's the swoosh. Jordan, Air Jordans. He was real popular back in the day, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, I think. And the Converse brands, driven by a shared purpose to leave an enduring impact. That doesn't really tell you much, but really they are a shoe and workout apparel, clothing and apparel company. So they manufacture and sell shoes and workout clothing, right? That's their bread and butter. Maybe you wear Nike shoes, maybe you wear Converse. Uh, I mean, I don't really see the, the difference between Nike and Air Jordan other than Air Jordan and some of that money goes to uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, but I remember back in the day, Air Force Ones and, and Michael Jordan shoes were very popular. I think they still are, especially some of the sneaker heads out there. Let me know in the comment section down below if you collect sneakers. I know there's some of you out there probably watching the channel that do that. I'm not one of those people, not a big uh, shoe person, but it is what it is. I know there's some of you out there. Let me know what kind of shoes do you still collect uh, Air Jordans or is there something else that's kind of taken over? And Converse, I think, are just the cheaper brands of, of shoes that some of us may have bought back in the day uh, to kick around in. Again, www.nike.com, that is their homepage. Now, the reason we're taking a look at them, down 3.16% on the day. We are talking about Nike Incorporated, ticker NKE, out of the consumer discretionary sector. And they have been dropping, you know, again, at least over the last several weeks. Looks like they're up a little bit in the after hours, but right up against their 52-week low with a 52-week low of $73, a high of $123.39. So definitely within 15% of a 52-week low. I mean, they're they're just pennies off of it, right? 20 cents off their 52-week low in the after hours, 5 cents off their 52-week low today. Market cap of 110.259 billion. So a large cap company here, a beta of 1.01, 1 
Price to earnings PE ratio, $19.58 per share. So they are a little elevated. I like typically in the teens, which they are, and they are less, uh, a lower PE than the overall market. The overall market right now is at 23 to 25 PE, depending on what day you're looking at it, whether it's pulled back or not. Uh, I think it's hit all time highs again today. So it's, it's definitely not pulled back right now. Uh, though some of the companies in the market are. Earnings per share, EPS sitting at $3.73 per share. Earnings date coming up sometime between September 26th to September 30th. Their dividend is $1.48 on the year. There are quarterly payers to so divide by four, though we'll see that here in a minute. Low starting dividend yield, I usually like, you know, above 2%, really above 3%, but 1.96, I do have some uh, low yielders in my portfolio, so this wouldn't even be the lowest in my portfolio. 1.96% dividend yield. X dividend date June 3rd. They did pay out July 1st, so kudos to those of you out there, those of you out there who just received your dividends. And according to Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from, one-year target estimate of $93.21. So they see some upside here, right? A little over 20% in upside. Now we're going to jump over and look at uh, dividend yield theory. To do that, we take a look at their five-year dividend yield average, 1.03 or 1.03% here. We compare it to their current 1.96 or forward. I know it says forward, but it's the current 1.96%. And since that is higher than their five-year dividend yield average, that speaks to undervaluation. These numbers being inversely correlated. If it's higher than their five-year average, that's undervalued. If it was lower, it would be overvalued. Now, payout ratio, I like 75% or lower, way under that, 38.87%. So they have a lot of room to continue to grow this dividend over time. So even though it's a low dividend, we'll see what their dividend growth is here in a little bit. Uh, they are growing that dividend. We'll see what they're growing it at. But very low payout ratio and can continue to pay down debt, make acquisitions, uh, repurchase shares, and pay out a dividend. No problem. It's more than covered here. Now we're going to look at free cash flow. We want growing free cash flow over time because typically if a company has growing free cash flow and they pay out dividends, they have growing dividends to match. 2021, you can see here at 5.9 billion, a bit of a drop here in 2022 to 4.4 .4 billion, 2023 down to 4.8 billion, and so far trailing 12 months looks like 6.195 billion. I would say growing free cash flow here though, because if you look, even though it looks like a drop in free cash flow, their repurchase of capital shares went way up, right? 2023 even higher than 2022, but 2022 huge jump up from 608 million to 4 billion right? 5.4 billion in 2023. So growing free cash flow looks like it's going to continue to grow, though we'll have to wait to see what 2024 uh, numbers shake out. Because remember, trailing 12 months includes part of 2023. Now we're going to jump over to stockanalysis.com. I always recommend more than one source so you can make sure the information you're getting is accurate and up to date. Two to three sources at least, in my opinion. Pick any sources that you want. You don't have to look at the ones I'm looking at. Just make sure you're not blindly following just one source. Because again, sometimes they're outdated. Sometimes they're not, uh, they haven't updated correctly. And sometimes they're just flat out wrong. So we've got to give it a second here. Let this plane go by. We have an Air Force base not too far from where I'm at. So every now and again, we get helicopters and planes going by. I think that was a helicopter. They do some, uh, uh, some uh, drills off the in the water here where they'll drop people in and simulate you know a, a boat rescue or something like that but i'm getting off on a tangent anyways uh stockanalysis.com they do have 33 analysts that have taken a look at this they see uh they call it a consensus buy if you were to go to stockanalysis.com you'd be able to click on each one of these see how many might call it a strong sell a sell a hold a buy or a strong buy low estimate of 75 dollars which would be a 2.67 percent increase from where it currently sits it's currently lower priced than their even their lowest estimate average estimate of 102 dollars and 67 cents which is pretty close to what we saw with yahoo finance that would be a 40.55 percent increase and if it happened to hit their high of 136 dollars that would be a 86.17 percent increase all the while you could collect that just under two percent dividend yield now, I like to look in, at statistics, look and see uh, return on equity and return on invested capital, how well a company is reinvesting capital back into itself. Return on equity is sitting at 37.1%. I like 10% or better, so it's over three times, almost four times what I'm looking for there. And return on invested capital, again, I like 10% or better. They're sitting at almost two times that at 19.12%. Earnings per share growth, I like 5% or better. They are sitting at 11.96%, so double what I'm looking for there with revenue growth forecasted at 4.52% over the next five years. Very good numbers overall. Let's look at the dividend history here and wrap this one up. 
Again, quarterly payer here. Now, there is a bit of a discrepancy between what we're seeing with stock analysis and Yahoo Finance. Payout ratio here, they're saying from stockanalysis.com at 43.53 and Yahoo Finance had it at 38. Either way, they are under the 75% I'm looking for, though that is a bit of a discrepancy. Uh, so I'd like to do a little bit more research, maybe look at a third source to see what's going on there. But still under the 75% I'm looking for. Very nice dividend growth, just under double digits at 9.43%. 19 years of dividend growth, buyback yield to 2.45%. So they're buying back their shares in a good time and shareholder yield at 4.45%. Now they do pay out on the April, July, October. Well, I don't know why it says January. Uh, January, April, July. So this is a little funky payout. Sometimes they're paying out in December. Sometimes they're paying out in January. So, uh, okay. I guess that's uh, just the way they do it. <laughs> but anyways, going back here in time, you're going back to 2021. You can see here they were paying 30 cents in the fraction of a penny. Raised it up in 2022, in December 2022, up to 34 cents. Raised it up December 2023, up to 37 cents. And I would say it looks like December would be around the time they're looking to raise that up again. So tune back in if you're interested or you own this one. They're probably going to give you a raise in December again if they're going to maintain this uh, dividend growth they've had going for 19 years now. All right, let's jump back over to the vested interest stock screener to see where, where this one stacks up. Uh, we started with understanding the business. Again, check them out at their homepage if you want to know more about them. Growing free cash flow, yep, check there. Growing dividend, check there. Dividend payout ratio is 75% or less, check there. Check valuation based on dividend yield theory. Dividend yield theory says it's potentially undervalued, check there. Buy below current cost basis or within 15% of a 52-week low. It is right up against its 52-week low. Return on invested capital and return on equity are both over 10%. And earnings per share is double that. It's over 5%. It's a little over 11% there. So check there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total. It meets them all. So on this one, this one is on my watch list. I am going to be doing more of a deep dive into the financials on this one. It looks attractively priced right now, though you would really want to understand their future sales, their future growth. What does that look like? And if we are entering a prolonged recession, they may indeed feel the pain of that, right? So uh, as far as the screener goes, might be worth uh, taking a look at. I know some of you are against the company altogether, and that's uh, more power to you. My money's green. I don't do politics on this station, and I certainly don't take politics into consideration when I'm investing. It's not part of my screener, and it's not part of any of my criteria at all. If, if it is for you, that's that's your business. Well, that is really it for this one. Let me know what you think of Nike in the comment section down below. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help me get to 1,000 subscribers and beyond. Really appreciate all of you who have taken the time to do that. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So again, if you have a company like Nike you would like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series, go ahead and drop it down below into the comment section. I'll work into the rotation. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you in the next one. I am not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can't lose money. You should never invest any amount you're not, not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select the criteria or seek the advice and counsel of a certified financial advisor.